We walk through our days connecting with each other, but also seeing each other through the lenses of the labels that we have been taught to apply to ourselves and to each other. While there can be so much to gain from understanding through the virtue of a label, there can be so much that we miss out on and we lose. So let's talk about the problems with labeling. But to revisit something as traumatic as abuse um, can be frightening up front, but it's certainly worth the healing that's going to come out on the other end. So back in 2010, I was doing my master's in counseling psychology, and in one of my courses, we were challenged to create some sort of project in which we explored the, the psyche, the essence of a self, the when we're sitting in relationship with other people, to begin noticing the ways in which we might be filtering our care, our support, our services, because of the ways in which we are labeling and perceiving the person across from us. I was so inspired by this exercise. It really got me thinking very deeply about the labels that I have applied to myself over the years, the labels that I apply to others, the ways in which we might limit ourselves and limit other people because of that labeling. And one of the biggest questions that came up for me is why and how do we get a label? Do we choose them? How do we acquire them? Are they given to us? Are there labels that we don't get to have access to because of certain qualities or characteristics that we have? What happens when the ways that we identify ourselves changes? In my teens, I might have described myself as a hip hop poet writing rebel. Here today in my 40s, I think I'm still a rebel, <laughs> but I might not be doing as much hip hop these days. My faith, my religion, the labels that I've used to describe myself over the years from Jehovah's Witness to Baptist to Methodist to uh, Buddhist to spiritual, right? These labels move and change with time. What labels do we hold on to? What labels do we release? What labels serve us? What labels limit us? So all these questions are spurring around in my mind. And I felt inspired to create what I'm going to share with you today. This is a flashback to 2010. And it was my way of processing and going through an inquiry about labels. Myself in the evening breeze 
<laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that little blast to the past as much as I did, checking out my fresh young face. I'm still pretty fresh and young, feeling that, feeling good. Notice the labels. And uh, I want to just leave you with uh, a final thought. I'm going to put my glasses on here so I can read it to you. I don't want to misquote it. This is from Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams. She says, Mindfulness is all about remembering what matters, even as others try to tell us who we are and what to pay attention to. We must forget the labels and boxes. Forget what we've been told so we can remember who we and others are. In this way, we can thrive on difference rather than be afraid of it and discover love for one another through curiosity. Today, I invite you to get curious about yourself. Begin to notice the labels that are serving you and the labels that are not. Watch out for the ways in which you are labeling other people in your life and begin to get curious and expand your view. Magical, really beautiful things can happen. Sorry for the pounding. They're replacing some windows today. I love you all. Take really good care. As always, if there's anything I can do to be a resource and a support, please reach out. And until next time, take good care of you.